Hey y'all, welcome to Kamira's Kitchen. Today I'm giving you four soul food side dishes that are perfect paired with any meal. We're doing a sweet potato casserole, shrimp mac and cheese, southern style green beans and potatoes, and also a amazing red rice. What is a main dish you would put with these sides or would you eat these all by themselves? Let me know in the comments. Red rice is a southern rice dish that has direct influence from jollof rice, which is West African. The enslaved Africans that created this dish when they were brought to America used the ingredients they had on hand to recreate something that was familiar to them red rice so today i am going to be making a red rice but i'm kind of using a little bit of some of the techniques that i use when i make jollof rice for my husband so i've added in butter some smoked sausage i've sauteed that with some onion and some peppers and i am going to put in some, what says spicy cajun seasoning but y'all don't believe the label this is basically mixed herbs with a little paprika all right I'm also going to put in some pepper and I'm going to saute this in total for about two to three minutes until everything's aromatic. Then I'm going to go in with some seasoned salt. Okay, just in my taste. Not too much. Okay, because um, you don't want it to become too salty. And then I'm putting in two cups of tomato sauce. This particular one is seasoned with oregano and basil and some other herbs and it already has a little bit of sugar in it. A lot of people add sugar to their red rice to balance out the acidity. However, this one already had a sweetness, so I didn't do that. If you base your red rice on tomato paste, like a lot of people do, then you probably will need that extra sugar. But I prefer to use the sauce instead. If you're a Gullah Geechee, tell me the way that you make your red rice. I was really exploring how you guys do this. And honestly, I found it really hard to find a recipe that had measurements. So I kind of had to play around and come up with my own based on my knowledge. So if you're Gullah Geechee or from South Carolina, let me know how I did or give me some tips at the end of this. Okay. Okay, I'm now going to put in some water and I'm also going to go in with two cups of extra long grain rice and then I'm going to mix this together. I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to bake mine in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes at first before I check on it. After 30 minutes, I opened my oven and I checked on my rice and I found that it was cooking well, but it was a little bit dry. So I ended up fluffing up the rice with some chopsticks at first to not crush the grains. Then I went in with my went in with some water and I also went in with a little chicken broth. So in total, I ended up adding two cups of water and two cups of tomato sauce for four cups of liquid. All right, I mixed this all together and then I allowed this to bake for about 15 more minutes. After that time, I took it out of the oven and I let it sit for five minutes with the lid on undisturbed. That way I feel like you get the fluffiest, most delicious and moist rice. My husband actually loved this and thought it tasted very similar, if not spot on, just like jollof rice. You can definitely tell the African influence here. Let me know if you're going to try this dish. Now this shrimp mac and cheese, baby, this one will make you want to dance, okay? Do your dance, do your dance. I'm going to tell you right now, he had shrimp mac and cheese like this before. Onto a pound of shrimp, I'm going to be adding this seafood magic seasoning as well as some Old Bay. Just about a teaspoon of each. But you know when you're cooking, you can just throw as much as you like on there, okay? I'm then going to start prepping my noodles by adding some chicken bouillon powder as well as some salt to some water. You need this as salty as the Dead Sea. Okay, and then you're going to put in one pound of the noodles of your choice. Cook them according to the package instructions. Drain them, add in some butter and some flour. Toast out, you know, that flour to get out that raw taste. I toast my flour for about 20 seconds because I'm also going to be sauteing some onion in this mixture. Onion may be a little bit unconventional for mac and cheese, but this is shrimp mac and cheese. It's different, so we doing it differently. I'm going to saute this for about one minute, stirring it constantly, and then I'll add in a whole can of evaporated milk. Stir it so that you don't get lumps. Okay, you don't want that flour to clump up with the milk, and then put in about two cups of heavy cream. 
Okay, that's going to make give it a rich flavor. And then I'm putting in half of this Borson garlic and herb cheese. But you could also substitute adding in three cloves of garlic and about two tablespoons of cream cheese. That would be a great sub. I'm going to mix in my cheeses. I'm just using two types of cheeses today, sharp cheddar and mozzarella. The sharp cheddar is going to give it that classic macaroni and cheese flavor, but the mozzarella is definitely king of giving you the texture that you want. To get the color that I'm looking for, I'll put in this Cezanne packet because the mozzarella and the white cheddar don't really have that cheesy color, if you know what I'm saying. I will then just season to taste with white pepper, a little bit of Vegeta, but if you don't have Vegeta, you can use chicken bouillon. I'm gonna continue to stir it until all my cheeses are melted and I'm getting that ultimate cheese pull, okay? What did you come here for, okay? I know this is what you came for when you wanted a Mac recipe, all right? Now this is optional, but I decided to go in with a little bit of whole milk just to thin out the cheese a little bit. That's the way I like mine, but I know some of y'all like that really thick and dense mac and cheese. So if you don't like that, then don't add in the extra whole milk. I'm then going to put my noodles into my sauce and I'm going to combine them and mix them thoroughly. I prefer to do it this way as opposed to pouring the sauce over my noodles in the baking dish. To bake this, I am going to use Sister Mabel. Y'all know Sister Mabel, don't be doing me no wrong, okay? I got her all buttered up and she ready to go. I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees already and I'm gonna put in half of the macaroni mixture. And then I'm going to layer it with about three fourths of the shrimp, spread out the shrimp everywhere. All right, we don't want people picking out them shrimps, getting every, everybody mad, cause some people get shrimp and other folks don't get no shrimp. Okay, there's always a greedy one in the family who will do that. Okay, so just give them a lot to start out with. Then I'm gonna put on the rest of my noodles and I have reserved just some of the cheese at the side to put on the top. And of course, I'm gonna put some paprika on it to make it fancy. I'm gonna bake this for 20 to 23 minutes at 400 degrees. Do not over bake this because you do not want those shrimp to get rubbery. And I just cooked the rest of the shrimp as a garnish on the side in a little bit of butter. Just cook them for about two minutes and then throw them on top. You want to make sure everyone knows what they're getting just in case they have a shrimp allergy. For my sweet potato casserole, okay, now I think this is a little bit like, you know, sweet potato pie in disguise. Okay, so you're kind of getting two for one with this one. You're getting like a sweet potato pie situation, but you're also getting a side. Right, so I have three large sweet potatoes and to that I'm going to add half of a stick of butter, half of a cup of heavy cream and half of a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of vanilla extract and just a touch of lemon extract, all right? I'm gonna also use some cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, and then I am going to start blending this up with my beaters. Now, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Y'all had to switch bowls. These beaters was just flicking sweet potato everywhere. I don't know what was going on. Okay, so I, I switched to a bigger bowl, and then we kept it pumping, all right? So as you beat this, you may see like big strings or like big chunks of sweet potato that don't break down. You can just pick those out because you don't want all them lumps and you sweep it to a casserole, okay? Cause y'all know you can cook. All right, so I know y'all looking out for stuff like that. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and two eggs and I'ma just use my spatula cause honey, them beetles was just, I ain't want raw eggs in my kitchen, okay? And then I am going to start to prepare the little strudel topping. For the topping, I'm using a combination of brown sugar, butter, and flour with a pinch of salt. I am gonna mix this together until like a paste starts to form, and then I am going to work in some chopped pecans. When you have great side dishes like this, I low key be forgetting all about the mains. Like I honestly feel like Soul Food Sunday, Thanksgiving, all these holidays for me, it's really about the side dishes. Let me know in the comments, do you come for the main dish or are you a side dishes girl or, or guy? Okay, let me know. Now to make that strudel topping, all I did was mix together that flour, butter, and brown sugar, and then I worked in those pecans. You want it to have a nice crumbly texture and it's gonna become nice and buttery on top. 
I am going to add my sweet potato mixture to my baking dish. I'm going to spread it out well, and then I am going to go in with this topping. This strudel topping is one of my favorite parts of the sweet potato casserole. Now this is going to need to bake um, at 375 for about 40 to maybe 45 minutes. I check it at about 35 to make sure the top isn't getting too brown. You should allow it to cool and then you can go in and serve this up. Let me know if you are going to make this sweet potato casserole recipe. I think Next up is some old school green beans and potatoes. This is a classic southern side dish that really can go with any meal or kind of be a meal on its own if you ask me. Start it by taking a one pound smoked turkey wing and I'm going to pressure cook this for 30 minutes with a teaspoon and a half of better than bouillon. This will give your turkey wing a jump start on the other foods because this is going to take more time to get tender. If you don't have a pressure cooker, then put four cups of water with the better than bouillon on your stove, cover it and simmer this for about 45 minutes to max one hour. You do want it to get tender. It doesn't need to be falling off the bone because it's going to continue to cook with the green beans and potatoes and all of that. So this is how your turkey wing should look. You can go ahead and let this set to the side while you get going on the green beans. Now I have a tablespoon of unsweetened salted butter and one piece of fat back now if you don't mess with the piggly wiggly okay i feel you just add some extra butter and it's all good okay now i have half an onion that i've diced i'm going to saute this for about three minutes you see that brownness that's starting to get on the bottom that's the fawn that's going to contribute to a wonderful taste now i have two cloves of minced garlic and one teaspoon of salt free cajun seasoning I personally don't like to just throw everything in the boiling water. This step gives you a better depth of flavor. If you've never done this before, please try it with your greens. Now I'm using a little bit of that Tony spices and herbs that has a little kick to it, okay? So, you know, don't get crazy with it. I mean, of course it has salt, so you don't want to add too much, especially when you're using smoked meat and you already have the bouillons. Now I'm going to add in my smoked turkey and all that pot liquor and I'm going to put it a uh, top on and I'm going to let this come to a simmer and then I'm going to add some white pepper just for a little flavor. Now at this point I don't adjust the seasonings too much because the broth is going to come down as it cooks. Now I have one pound of green beans that they came pre-trimmed but I did cut them in half and this is the bag I use. Baby I'm done. I am done trimming green beans. Okay, I was trimming them as a kid, you know, snapping the end, snapping the middle, and I ain't doing it no more. Now, it does say washed and ready to reuse, but I did rinse them, okay? But, baby, ain't nobody trying to snap green bean tails, okay? So, I let, you know, I let the stove do it for me. I'm going to let this simmer on the lowest heat setting for about 15 to maximum 20 minutes until my green beans are just a little bit tender, but I don't want them to be all the way there because I'm going to put in half of a pound of mini potatoes that I have cut in half. I've had them sitting in some water because I don't want them to get brown and I'm going to just let those simmer for the last 20 minutes. Now, if you like some really soft green beans, then you can simmer your green beans for about 30 minutes and then add your potatoes in the last 20 minutes but you don't want your potatoes to overcook because they're just going to start getting super mushy and personally I don't like that okay now you want your potatoes to be just at the line of the broth if they're not fully submerged that's okay they'll just kind of steam in total I cook my green beans 15 minutes without the potatoes and then 20 minutes with the potatoes that's perfect for me and then i'm going to go ahead and take out the smoked turkey and pick apart the meat i want to put that smoked meat back in there before i adjust any of my seasonings now if you have loved this tutorial please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please let me know in the comments what other soul food side dishes you would like to see i know a lot of you guys have been planning some soul food sunday meals around my videos and i love doing them for you so let me know what else you want to see now once you pick apart this meat I do like to remove the skin and y'all that little bit left on the bone honey I eat that okay y'all know that's a little chef snack amen okay now I'm gonna take this meat 
and I'm going to put it right back in to my green beans with my fat back and mm, everything, everything. Okay. I'm going to mix that together. And at this point, I will now give it a taste. Okay. Because that smoked meat is going to incorporate. And you could even let it simmer just for a minute or two just to make sure everything's kind of come together. You know, those potatoes have sucked up a lot of the seasoning. So I just went in with just a little bit, just a pinch more of this Tony's. And to me, this was absolutely perfect okay this is like a one pot meal even if you want to add a little cornbread okay <laughs> baby you eating good in the neighborhood now don't forget that i love you jesus loves you god bless everyone who watches my channel i hope you try this recipe and if you do please let me know in the comments it brings me so much joy when you guys love these recipes and you guys know i respond to all of you guys have a good day and god bless and i'll see you next time bye